Hey guys, it's that time again. Adobe released new versions of Photoshop Premiere, but all their software. But one thing is very, very exciting for me personally. So that's why I actually created this video for you guys to go through some changes in Lightroom CC. Now, why is Lightroom CC so important at the moment for me? Thanks to COVID, or not thanks to COVID, depending on how you look at it, we are, of course, limited in what we can do with our model. So that means that I'm now more on the road, um, exercising with my bike and doing other stuff, but I still want to take photos. And this is where Lightroom CC actually became a vital part in my workflow, because it's so awesome to take pictures on your phone, upload them via the cloud and then edit them on your iPad Pro or on your desktop. So Lightroom CC more and more is becoming a vital part of that integration. However, there are a lot of things still missing in Lightroom CC, but one of the things they now added, which I'm really happy for, and I'm going to show that also in this video. But first, let's talk about creativity. One of the most fun things, of course, is create a mood with your images. Now, of course, you all know the trick, right? Just add a little bit of this, add a little bit of that, and you have magic. But what is that little bit of this and that little bit of that? Well, when you look at movies, you know that color evokes emotion. Think about a horror movie. Always when you walk past the cemetery, it's, yes, it's a blue light. There's a little bit of fog. Did you ever see that in real life? No, of course not. When you look at movies, they use color to create and evoke emotion. So that really draws you into the motion or sorry, into the picture. Now, let's take a look at how Lightroom CC actually added one very, very cool option to make you the next editor for emotion. So this is just a picture of my bike. It's nothing special. I already did some uh, presets of my own preset pack. So let's reset everything for now. So let's go to a reset. Okay, there we go. So this is the standard image. Let's just do what I normally do. So I give a little bit of contrast, open up the shadows just a little bit, a little bit, uh, throw down the highlights, add a little bit of exposure. There we go. Now, of course, we want to create cool looks in our images. So normally what I do is I will go into my tone curve and go, for example, into red and just take a little bit out of the shadows, add a little bit into the highlights, then go to blue. Let's turn this maybe a little bit up and here. The, the thing is, when you use it with your curves, you are a little bit limited in what you can do. You can't take four points and just start pulling that curve because your image will literally just break apart. Just look at this. So that doesn't look right anymore. There, there's this, this, I don't know, this gradient that looks really, really bad. Okay, so for now, let's start again with our base. And let's do it differently. Let's do the same thing. Let's add a little bit of contrast, take out the highlights, add a little bit of shadows. Now every image takes a little bit of a different approach, but this is what I normally do to create that. It's not HDR, but you really get all that information out of your shot and I just love it. Okay, so let's go down. And now you will see something new called color mixer, color grading. Now the color mixer we already know. Uh, you can select a color and then you can change the U, saturation and luminance. A color has always three coordinates, U, saturation and luminance. And luminance and saturation are a little bit connected. For example, when you lower the luminance, a color will get more vibrant, more deep. And that, of course, for a lot of people mimics saturation. The problem with saturation is that you sometimes can clip a channel. When you use luminance, you can still make a color very, very deep, but you don't clip that channel. So that's a very, very cool trick. So here you can do it per color. So um, a red, orange, yellow, green, and all the other colors. You also have a picker where you can literally just pick one color. For example, let's do this red and it will actually go to orange, which in this case is correct. So let's change that to red. There you go. So you do it with the U. Okay, very interesting. You can also go here and do it per color for only the U's, only the saturation, and only the luminance. It just depends on how you like it. I normally do it on this and I will just select my color. Okay, this is the cool one, color grading. Now this is something that you have to get used to a little bit. This is why I show it in a video. So what is color grading? Color grading 
easily explained is you have these circles with all your colors and you just drag them where you want and it will tint the image. You can do this globally or you can do it per setting. So for example, only for the shadows, only for the midtones or only for the highlights. And this is the one that got me incredibly excited because watch this. First, you can do it globally. Now, the first thing you will see is, hey, I can't do anything because I can only see this circle and I only have luminance. Where is everything else? Well, that's the thing. You also see a circle here and you see a circle here. Now, this is in essence your saturation. So you can add globally a red filter, for example, pull it all the way over there and add more saturation to that filter and lower, for example, the luminance of that filter. As you can see here. Now I'm talking about a filter and it's not really a filter. It mimics what you can do in Photoshop by just laying over a layer with that color. But it's different. It, it mimics that a little bit. Okay, so let's say that you want to do this. Or maybe you want to add green. As you can see, it's very, very powerful. Now, of course, I'm on the top setting, so don't do that. But just draw this down. And as you can see, you can draw a pretty much straight line. And let's just warm up the image a little bit to give it that full look. And there you go. So now you have a little bit of that red in. But let's say you go like, hmm, Frank, I really like this, but I don't like it everywhere. Okay, I got you. Okay, I did a quick reset and let's just look at what you can do. Of course, you see these three circles. If you press here, you can literally just control it, but it's a little bit small. You see that it's really small, but you can you can do it. For example, your midtones. Let's change the midtones to a red. There we go. Change it just a little bit. There we go. Then go for the shadows. Let's do blue. I'm just messing around a little bit. Okay, and let's for the highlights add a little bit green. There you go. You create something really, really funky this way. But there's more. Okay, we're back where we started. Let's go for this one. And let's do it globally. Now, I already showed you that you can move that little circle here. You can move it around and then change the middle circle, as you can see here. However, if you want to change it later, you can pull this around like this. But did you know that when you press the control key, you actually get this circle and you can also do it from here. And now the cool thing is I can't make it bigger and smaller anymore. So it means it's now locked and now I can literally just go like, okay, I want this kind of adjustment. Let's see which color and I don't want to lose this part. So I fine tune that and now I can fine tune this with the control key. And there we go. Now, as soon as I release the control key, this is where I can again move this part. Let's lock it there, use the control key. And now I can only move it around. So I can't make it smaller or bigger again. See, now it's jumping around. So you can literally just fine tune everything. This is something that's really powerful. And you're gonna see this a lot in images because this is the way that you create mood in your images. This is the way that you tint your images and make it a little bit more different and stand out. So really cool addition, but there's more. Now let's say that I really like this image and I wanna export it. Now, one of the things that I didn't like about Lightroom CC was that I normally export everything with a little logo underneath. And well, with Lightroom CC, that wasn't possible up until now. So let's do share and let's go for custom settings. There we go. Now, of course you can do a watermark, include watermark, but up until now, this was only text. Press here. And now you can see that next to text, you can literally also now go to graphic. Yes, and I already have my logo in there, Studio FD. And I can change the size, make it bigger or smaller. I don't like it big, so let's make it really small, just noticeable. You can change your opacity, for example, to no logo. Doesn't make any sense. And just pull it up. There we go. And you can change your horizontal offset and your vertical offset. Of course, you can rotate your logo if you like. And you can do your anchor points. And you know the really cool thing about this? As soon as I did this, I took out my phone with Lightroom CC. And also on my phone, I now have my logo in my images. Awesome. That was what we wanted to see Adobe. So 
that's a great addition. Okay, so there are more things, of course, in Lightroom CC that have changed, but I just wanted to focus on these two parts because these two parts are going to change the way that I edit my images enormously. And this is one update where I'm really, really psyched about and I'm really happy with it, especially because Lightroom CC, as mentioned before, is getting such a vital part of my workflow now that we can't do a lot in our studio with models. And I do a lot on the road and Lightroom CC for that. It was lagging in a few parts and Adobe literally just solved a big part of those problems. So awesome make sure you check it out it's now available on creative cloud if you have a subscription you can download it for free of course that's why you have a subscription right see you again in the next video guys if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and stay safe better six feet apart than six feet on the right see you next time bye guys